It's an evil club, and you ain't in it. Full of psychopaths who believe in eugenics. It's an evil club, and you ain't in it. Full of psychopaths who believe in eugenics. It's an evil club, and you ain't in it. Full of psychopaths who believe in eugenics. There's a war going on inside, no man is safe from. You can run, but you can't hide. Cause the war's on your health, so beware the lies. Your endocrine system is under attack. That's a fact in the past. We'll show you what you need to see through the veil of what they don't want you to see. It's a silent slaughter. They poison the water, and the war starts early. Look at what we feed our toddlers. Sugar and more sugar, it's never on the news. How we're hurting ourselves. We're fake food, but it's planned. It goes back a long ways to the Royal Society. And Network Bernays, it's control. That's the goal and the plan To make Mulder known All of modern man They really have Always thought they were gods And they planned it all In the clubs and in the lodge The Lunar Society What they called themselves Lunatics to the 1900s Rise of eugenicists He developed a method For classifying fingerprints It said his racist science All made sense Sir Francis Galton What an honorable man The father of eugenics And his racist is a clan He was Darwin's cousin And influenced by his work and help paved the way to the rise Of laws that were passed that got people sterilized Cause these maniacs care so much about our lives No lie, no hype over here The Supreme Court ruled they could do it Then they cheered the same scientists Who were worshipped and loved Who sat up on the throne High above like gods they judged And decided who could breed They castrate them and give them a shot To kill the genes, no more kids for you Don't you dare call them cruel you're not as smart as them, know your role, you're a fool The prestigious school that they went to And it twines them all The who's who's like the Carnegie Institution Don't you dare but question the final solution Like Charles Davenport and his eugenics views Who influenced Germany before World War II He had two editorial positions that he wrote for And spread his eugenics suspicion The Nazis agreed and molded the path on American eugenics Psychopaths, but as I said, it all goes way back to the Royal Society and more maniacs. So be careful when they say to bow down and obey and not get caught up in the hype that they sell in the craze. Cause 60,000 Americans were sterilized and it was all legal. Just open your eyes, stop thinking, learn who you're dealing with. And one of the worst isn't even a scientist. He's a bitch and a coward, and he smiles as he says that if you don't listen to him, your kids will be dead. Just like those demons that came before He claims that he cares, but he declared a war He's a bitch Bill Gates is not a god I'm appalled when they applaud and worship his cause He's a modern day Nazi Eugenicist, I'll say it again Bill Gates is a bitch It's sick And a part of all we see The fear of disease and the war on liberty Your mask won't protect your neck from the blade that will draw on you If you question what they say You can't think for yourself or own yourself To them your mind ain't yours and neither is your health You can't think for yourself or own yourself To them your mind ain't yours and neither is your health You can't think for yourself or own yourself To them your mind ain't yours and neither is your health You can't think for yourself or own yourself To them your mind ain't yours and neither is your health It's an evil club and you ain't in it Full of psychopaths who believe in eugenics It's an evil club and you ain't in it Full of psychopaths who believe in eugenics It's an evil club and you ain't in it Full of psychopaths who believe in eugenics It's an evil club and you ain't in it Full of psychopaths who believe in eugenics
my blood. We are the Alusa Nation. We have been called the Indians. We have been called Native American. We have been called hostiles. We have been called pagan. We have been. And this is Mike from My Strand Thoughts, and this is my podcast special on eugenics. Now, why did I decide to do this as a special? The simple answer is it's such a large subject, you can't do it in 30 minutes or 45 minutes. There's just no way that you can actually do that. Um, and the other reason is I wanted to take my time to do the research, and there's just so much to get through. There really is. Uh, myself actually having Asperger's syndrome and ADHD. And some other issues is something that I wanted to take my time researching and really understand. Um, so with that being said, I'm just going to go ahead and get right into it. So the practice of eugenics has actually been around forever. Now, the tribal people of Brazil, interesting enough, they practice what was called infant side. Now, this is the act of killing infants or the offspring now to dispose of basically unwanted children. Now, however... The main purpose was and always has been to prevent the passing on of the weak or deemed disabled children. Um, now, the tribal people have been doing this since what's called now the pre-colonial times. Um, Plato actually once stated that there should be a practice of selective mating to produce a kind of like a guardian class. Now, in the time of Sparta, Every child was actually inspected by a council of elders. Now, they called this the Berisia. Now, they would actually determine whether or not a child was fit enough to live or not live. So, folks, imagine that, that you had to go through a whole council saying, hey, your child just simply ain't fit to live, bro. So, you know, we're going to have to get rid of it. Now, anyways, moving on. Famous geography, Strover. Uh, Strabo, sorry, said that ancient Italian communities would actually pick 10 virgin women as well as 10 different men and then they would actually take the best of those genders and then they would mate them together. Now, the best men and women and the second best male and females. Now, hold on, it gets really interesting here. Now, this is actually done based on their athletic abilities. Now, this practice would actually basically continue until all 20 people were actually assigned to each other. Now, if a male was actually caught dishonoring himself, he would actually be separated from his partner pretty much immediately. Now, back at the beginning of the Roman Republic, interesting enough, fathers were actually required to kill anybody, any of their offspring that was deemed dreadful or deformed or disabled in any kind of way. Now, that was actually, they had to do that immediately kind of thing. 
Now, according to Tacitus, the ancient Germanic tribes uh, of his day actually would kill any tribal member that they deemed to have vices or disabled or weak, wasn't warlike or deemed a coward. And they would normally actually kill them by drowning them in the German swamps and marshes that were common around that area in that time. Now, however, majority of historians, modern historians, widely dispute his account of the ancient Germanic tribes. And like always, you're going to have one group of scientists saying, hey, that's what happened. One group of people saying that's not what happened and so on and so on. So the early modern history of eugenics being for basically, you know, improving the human population through selective breeding really basically was developed, honestly, by Francis Galton. And this guy is really interesting, guys. He really is. Um, he was actually inspired by Darism and his theory of natural selection. It's really crucial that you understand, however, that Galton is the half-cousin of Charles Darwin. Now, Galton was inspired by his theory of evolution. However, he said, which was to explain the development of plant species as well as animals, and destined to basically apply it to humans. Galton believed that the desired human qualities that people are seeking into their biological traits, right? Although Darwin, his cousin, strongly disagreed with Galton's elaboration of his theory, it was around 1883 that he actually named his research, you guessed it folks, eugenics. So thus eugenics was born, and its introduction of genetics, eugenics became associated with genetic determinism. This is the belief that human character is entirely or majoritarily caused by genes unaffected by the education or living conditions. Now, I want you to keep in mind that a lot of people, especially early genetics, right, or geneticus, however you want to say that, uh, were not, did not really apply to Darwin's theory of evolution. Um, and thought that it was not needed for eugenics policies based on genetic determinism. Now, eugenics has always been controversial. It doesn't, as a history buff, let me just say that. It doesn't matter what time period of history you actually look at. Eugenics, the science of it, has always been controversial. It is pseudoscience. It is twisted. It is very, very wicked straight out of horror movies in a lot of aspects and that's the reason why it's been deemed illegal in many countries and it is highly controversial still now <clears throat> yet it kept his gr uh, grand grown for the and it has actually continued to grow basically within the education circles even in that time period now eugenics has become an academic discipline at many colleges and universities at that time and I actually believe even to this time, if you really think about it. Now, they have actually received mass funding from numerous different sources to win the general support of the public. And we're still talking about Galton, by the way. Uh, now, they need public support to sway their opinion, basically, um, towards the responsible eugenic values in parenthood, right? Now... This is where it gets kind of interesting. This included the British Eugenics Education uh, Society of 1907. Now, the American Eugenics Society of 1921. They even sought support from clergymen and to modify the message to meet its religious ideals. So they basically went to different clergymen, uh, preachers, and um, to say, we need your help with the wording on this to actually re uh, reach and explain it to people the religious backgrounds. Now, even the Roman Catholic Church was massive supporters of eugenics. And you're going to find out why throughout this research, trust me. Leave it to the Catholic Church to be supporters of them, though, man. So anyways... They even spoke at the 1921 International Eugenics Conference. Archbishops Patrick Joseph Hayes in 1916 at the Madison Grant published the book of The Passing of the Great Race, 
or the racial basis of European, European history. Now, he was actually an American eugenics and lawyer as well as an amateur anthropologist. Now, they, that book was actually largely ignored when it was first published. Now, the book was actually used by certain individuals who advocated for restricted immigration as justification for their eventually known as scientific racism. So this would be the aspect of races determining their beliefs and trying to find some scientific reasoning behind their belief. And that was largely called scientific racism. Now, there was actually three international eugenics conferences. Now, this actually presented a largely uh, global venue for eugenics as a whole. Now, they had actually meetings in 1912 as well in London and 1921 and 1932 in New York City. I want you to understand that this next part I deem to be crucial, according to my notes right here, to actually understand. And I still feel like it is. Eugenics policies, right, in the United States was actually implemented um, on a state level. Legislators back in the early 1900s at the same time, uh, eugenic policies was started in France and Germany as, as well as Great Britain. Now, later in the warring 1920s as well as the 1930s, the eugenics policy, right, of sterilizing certain mental patients. Now, this is actually adopted as well by Belgium, Brazil, Canada, Japan, and Sweden, largely at that time. Frederick Osborne wrote one time an article, Development of Eugenics Philosophy, and framed eugenics as a social philosophy, as a philosophy with complication for social order. This definition is not actually universally accepted at that time. Osborne was actually advocating for a higher rates of sexual reproduction among people with desired traits, um, aka positive eugenics is what that was called at that time, or reduced rates of sexual reproduction, aka sterilization of people with less desired or undesired traits, a.k.a. what they called negative eugenics. All right, so eugenics was internationally organized through the International Federation of Eugenics Organizations. The scientific aspects were carried on by uh, bodies such as Kaiser Wilhelm Institute of Anthropology. The Human Heredity and Eugenics. The Cold Springs Harbor Carnegie Institution, um, aka or the Experimental Evolution, and the Eugenics Record Office. The new uh, politically, the movement advocated for sterilization laws. In eugenics, <clears throat> its moral dimensions. Uh, eugenics rejected that all human beings are born equally and redefined moral worth purely in terms of genetic fitness. The racist elements actually included the pursuit of pure Nordic race or Aryan genetic pool and eventual, eventually the elimination of the unfit races were the overall what they desired. Now, majority of the leading British politicians actually subscribed to the theory of eugenics. In fact, Winston Churchill supported the British Eugenics Society. He was actually the vice president himself. That's how much he supported it. He was the vice president. So Winston Churchill said that eugenics could actually uh, solve the uh, race determination and reduce crime and poverty overall. Always a great thing when they can figure out how to reduce crime and poverty where they think they can. <clears throat> Anyways, we're going to move on. Now, there were critics of eugenics, naturally. The American sociologist Lester Frank Ward, for example, 
English writer G.K. Chesterton, Germanic um, American anthropologist Franz Boas. They argued that advocates of eugenics greatly overestimate the influence of biology. I would wager that they were right and that they still do. Now, the Catholic Charge's integrity enough was an opponent of the state and for sterilizations. Said accepted um, isolating people with different heredity diseases. Um, to not let them actually be able to reproduce. In fact, the attempted by Eugenics Education Society wanted the British government to actually legalize voluntarily sterilization. Um, was actually opposed by the Catholic Labor Party, surprisingly. Now, Eugenics actually gained a massive social movement and it was at its basically height in the early 20th century, at the point it was practiced, you know, uh, around the world, basically, as well as encouraged by numerous different world governments, institutions, as well as influential um, ind individuals, uh, scientists, celebrities at the time, uh, musicians, things like that. Now, some of the new eugenic policies were actually being rolled out. Get ready for this. Genetic screening birth control, marriage restrictions, segregation of the mental ill and racial, compulsory sterilization act, forced abortions, forced pregnancies that would ultimately uh, culminated in basically genocide. Now, it was around in 2014, gene selection uh, farther than people selecting was actually made possible through the advancement of uh, genome editing, now leading to what is called new eugenics, also known as neo-eugenics or consumer eugenics. Now, the reproduction of eugenics started to decline basically in the 1930s. Uh, Ernest Rudin justified racial policies in Nazi Germany by using eugenics. Adolf Hitler actually wrote about eugenics in Mein Kampf himself. He even um, emulated the United States legalization for sterilization of defectiveness. However, he wanted to go even more extreme with it and extreme levels with eugenics. Some of the early eugenics methods were actually identifying and classifying people and their families, thus including the poor, mentally ill, blind, deaf, homosexual, and racial different grouping, such as Gypsy, Rome, and Jews in Nazi Germany. Now, they would actually deem certain people dogenprot, or unfit. Therefore, deem segregation and institutionalization, sterilization, and even mass murder was on the table. Now, by the end of World War II, many eugenic laws were abandoned after being found or associated with Nazi Germany. In fact, the practice of imposing measures intended to prevent births with the natural element of racial or religious groups fell with an international crimes against humanity, a.k.a. genocide. <clears throat> Now, the European uh, uni, uh, Union also proclaimed eugenics practices and particular sterilization of people to be crimes against humanity. I want you to remember those two factors as we keep going throughout this research, okay? It's very important that you understand that, those two things. Remember how I said it's been deemed illegal, right? And it's just basically been rewritten to allow people to actually practice it for corporate gain or whatever else it might be. So keep paying attention to that. Don't forget those two facts because we're only 17 minutes in. So in spite its actual decline in eugenics laws, some governments still use a mandatory sterilization laws well into the 21st century. Some cases actually included, and it's been used on indigenous women as well, sterilization of them even into 20, 2019. Okay, now in the Netherlands, it was actually mandatory for all transgender people to be sterilized. 
as an agreement to be legally recognized as their described or destined gender that they wanted. Now, this lasted basically until 2014. So think about that. I mean, they had a law that said, okay, so if you want to be recognized as a different gender, that's fine, but you're going to have to let it sterilize you so you can't reproduce. And that lasted until 2014. So Japan actually had an ongoing similar law for transgenders themselves. Surprise. Now, 31 United States have laws allowing forced sterilization. 17 United States allow sterilization of children under the age of 18 some actually don't even require a legal guardian to make the decision anymore. So, we're going to go into the mod what, a little bit more into modern eugenics, okay? So, new developments in genetics and reproductive technologies at the beginning of the 21st century. Now, this led to an increased interest into eugenics again, including questioning its ethical practices. That's where you see me at. I'm always questioning the ethics of it. Now, people such as sociologist Troy Duster have said that modern genetics will become a backdoor to old school eugenics. Now, that same viewpoint is actually shared by Tania Simoncelli, <clears throat> the director of the White House Forensic Scientist. She stated that we are moving into a new era of eugenics, that unlike the Nazi eugenics, modern eugenics, consumer-driven, make, uh, make it bust. This is where children are beginning to be called to make order, uh, basically, to make consumer products. So the children can become consumer products because of the eugenics policies. Now, Richard Dawkins wrote in 2006 newspaper article, that he believed that modern eugenics would be misused like the Nazis did, to the extent that some scientists will not even admit that breeding humans or with, uh, for certain abilities and features is even possible. Now, he stated that modern eugenics is like breeding animals for certain traits, such as speed or herding skill. He said that there is no difference in people being bred for certain athletic soldiers, um, athletes, soldiers, artistic abilities, where there is a distinction between animals and human breeding. Now, <clears throat> the famous father of uh, Singapore... Lee Kron Yu promoted eugenics back in 1983. He stated, nature over nurture. Now, he, wanted to, he went on to state that intelligence is 80%, nurture is 20%. And he stated that what is credited to the uh, successes of his own children is genetics. He would actually give speeches where he urged highly educated women to have more children. He stated that it is not social delinquencies with the start to domestic society um, in the absence of idiocracy society. In the fact, the, in Singapore, they provided a financial incentive okay, to the highly educated women. I also, uh, he said, in hopes that they would have their own, have more children than the uneducated women. Okay. So basically what he's saying and what he believed in and what the Singapore government did based on his research is, uh, and, it, and it's honestly being done again even today, but certain countries sometimes will do what they, uh, breeding programs. And they will pay certain women a certain stature or men a certain stature or knowledge or whatever scores they have. They will pay them to have children. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so unlike nations back in October of 2015, right? Uh, hold on. Stated that eugenics is still problematic due to the being able... 
to open up new forms of uh, discrimination as well as sterilization so that, hold on. Uh, uh, for those that do not want or cannot afford the technology. So it only be, what they're saying is it will still be dis, um, very much only for rich people. They're all the only people who's going to be able to afford the technology to be able to do anything beneficial is what they're saying. So, <clears throat> transhumanism. This is associated with eugenics, right? Um, Arthias's majority of them, um, all the majority of them actually say that their views are um, assistive reproductive technologies. We will be looking into basically more of them in a little bit, and we really will be. So, prenatal, prenatal, or hold on. Ah, prenatal testing. This is to detect birth defects as various glasses before birth or before um, various stages before birth. Sorry. My writing was kind of messed up in this. Um, so this is why so many call it a form of contemporary eugenics. Majority of it due to the fact um, that it can lead up to abortions of fetuses with an undescribed traits or undesirable traits, sorry. Uh, meaning I want my baby aborted because they're telling me it's going to have this trait or that trait. Therefore, I don't even want to give birth to it. So I'm just going to kill it. That's what that's saying. So the um, heterozygote test, right? Sorry about my punctuation of that. Um, is actually used to as a detection of heredity uh, diseases. This allows couples to actually determine if they're at risk of passing different genetic defects, right? Uh, to their child. They want to be able to see if it's a heredity diseases from to the father. Hold on. Uh, from father to mother. What are the first challengers, right, to eugenics based on genetic inheritance back in 1915 was done by Thomas Hunt Morgan. Now, he showed genetic mutation that happened outside of inheritance. This involved the discovery of hatching of a fruit fry. Fruit fly, sorry. Now, it actually had white eyes. However, the fly came from a family with red eyes at the time. Now, this showed a huge genetic change outside of their inherited traits. Now, he further criticized a view of certain genetic traits. Things like intelligence as well as criminality were passed on mainly due to the traits of being subjective. I think it's still somewhat subjective, but a lot of people will still argue with that fact, honestly. Sadly, even still to this day. <clears throat> now, Audrey Poloski from the University of Warclaw said that eugenics will cause harmful loss of genetic diversity if a eugenics program selected gene that could possibly be associated with the positive traits. She used examples of government eugenics programs that would not allow people with ego uh, or eyesight problems from breeding. Now, although it was unintentional consequences, a selective against high intelligence, uh, since... Ah, uh, since the two are to put together. She said, uh, naturally accepted improvement of gene pools could result in our extinction due to increased voluntarily to disease, reduced ability to adapt to environmental changes and other factors that may not be seen as um, advanced. You need to understand that a long-term species-wide eugenics plan could be led to extermination due to the elimination of certain traits thought to be undesirable, will actually reduce genetic diversity by definition. Now, I could actually, I could actually somewhat agree to a lot of that, of what they're saying right there, because they're saying that if you just start executing, executing different people based on an undesirable trait that they might be born with, 
that eventually you can also cause the unintentional extinction of the human race and those traits because those traits might be needed in some kind of shape, form, or way, and then you're just killing that off, is what they're saying. So the political consequences of eugenics do call for a conversation of ethics behind the eugenics movement. Naturally, a lot of it is concerned due to the eugenics is actually controversial. Um, it's controversial past. I, t I, would, I would wager it's still very controversial, however. Now, this argues constantly. Has the science actually changed? Now, naturally, huge advances in science, right, has actually changed eugenics. Now, the past eugenics was actually about sterilization and um, enforced reproduction laws. Or enforced reproduction laws, sorry. These days, it has to do with embryos being tested to see if they would be easy to get diseases sex and birth defects a, a culture method reproduction such as vitro fertilization are becoming actually way more common now there is still a lot of ethical concerns uh with modern eugenics with all this being said however and i would wager that's going to continue to get worse as far as people being concerned about um this or that now one of the early figures of eugenics was in um, Hewitt. She actually won a lawsuit. Now, you guys, this is really interesting. Um, she won a lawsuit against her own mother, as well as a surgical staff at the time, for sterilizing her without her permission or consent at the time or without any knowledge at all. Now, to actually have her sterilized. Hold on a second. The date of her sterilization that they actually did was August 18th, 1934. Now, no surprise, it was in actually San Francisco, California. Her lawsuit was officially filed in 1936. And another one is Francis Galton again, who is a cousin of Charles Darwin, as we said before. He had a theory and a talent that he called theory intelligence, right? Now, this is getting really interesting. Theory intelligence. What is that? You're going to find out. I just never heard it called this before. Now, to be a family trait that is passed on by DNA, a.k.a. genetic genes. So his idea was that people with good genes to mate with one another as well as prevent people who do not have good genes from mating with each other. Now, if you put that into practice, then in only a few generations, you could, in theory, create a race of superhumans. Now, his name of talent still was not basically catching on, calling it talent. So he settled on calling his research eugenics. Now, this is a Greek word meaning well and born combined. Now, another scientist, Charles Davenport, um, was basically believed basically the same way as what Galton believed, that selective breathing could completely, can completely change the human race. However, <coughs> there's always a however with scientists. Um, he also stated that there needed to be clarity and understanding of how heredity actually worked. <coughs> so this guy wanted to establish an actual station of experimental evolution. He said it is not enough to simply observe in natural habitats. He said we needed to actually capture them to do the experimental research in fighting patterns of heredity. You must understand <coughs> Davenport, just like Galton, truly believed that improving the human race heredity should be almost of religious significance, of the most profound moral importance in society. Now, they both stated that they believed that they were qualified and more qualified of knowing how to breed, how to breed and protect the human race 
because they basically believed that they were the best of the best and the brightest of the brightest out of the human race. This isn't an uncommon thing. You're going to see this throughout this eugenic special. They always said, well, I am perfectly fine with saying that this should be the way it be because I'm the smartest person around. That's basically what it boils down to. Now, in fact, in 1906, Davenport was working in Cold Springs Harbor. Now, it was his success in experience, uh, experiments in genetics that really made him a rising star, if you will, in a particular field. Now, his focus on you could grow more desired, basically, wheat, showing higher levels of protein in wheat, as well as creating uh, chickens that would lay more eggs. It was his success in these um, other experiments that made him state that he could actually improve the human race. Now, he did this with the establishment of the Mandela Ratio Genetics. Now, Davenport insisted in the same way that animals are bred for certain desired traits, we naturally should be and could do the same thing to humans. He stated that it's only the next natural step. Um, and this was part of his actual speech, okay, that he gave to his founders in 1909 when he needed financing for research on human genetic traits. It's how positive they were. They literally gave this in their speeches that they were giving at the time. Now, one of Davenport's main methods was to actually collect family pedigrees and that he believed he could then trace different family um, uninherited traits or undesired traits with that he believed he would be able to finally prove how evolution actually worked. Um, now, for the human beings, in the same way that they believed that they understood how it worked for animals. Always how they feel, you know. So now his core idea was actually collaborated desire traits and then isolate, right? So he wanted to collect all your desire traits and then isolate and just focus on those soul traits that you actually said that you wanted. And then basically taking the undesired traits and eventually they would basically breed them out, he said, by isolating both of them from one another. Um, now, this to the most would actually create a crime-free, peaceful, intellectual, athletic, perfect utopia type of society. Where have you heard that before lately? Anyways, that would be basically accomplished by breeding out all the undesired traits of human beings. Um, undesirable is just basically a word that means set a particular people uh, deemed undesirable. That means that these people over here said, hey man, no good. So this group or this individual desired what uh, basically decides what is desired and what is undesirable. And they basically have a degree or they think that they could be basically gods making life and death decisions and altering the human DNA while they're out it, a.k.a. God's creation. Now, see, in the late night in the late 1800s, right, um, and early 1900s, they truly did believe in science government, as well as bureaucracy. Now, as a way, basically, of solving all the world's social um, problems, they had really strong belief, basically, in collectedness, people banding together and working together to ultimately improve society. Now, eugenics back then actually was basically a huge deal. You know what I'm saying? And it was a huge part of that to them. So, Henry Gofford... Sorry, I don't have um, AC in here where I'm at. So, Henry Gofford was a, psych a psychologist and a director of the Vineyards Institution. And he was a massive lover of the science of heredity. So, get this. He actually was the inventor of the intelligence test. He stated that he invented it as a way to measure individuals' mental abilities and similar similarities to the so-called normal people of the same age. 
Now, once he invented this test, he was actually able to categorize his findings, right? Now, he actually added a new category to the idiot chart. All right. Now, this one really took me a minute to, to get used to. He called this the high-functioning moron. Sorry about that. And that was added officially. Now, he stated that they had the mind of a 10 or 12-year-old, yet to their high-functioning abilities, they would actually appear and act as if they were a normal person. Um, but in fact, they weren't normal, he said. Right? He stated they were actually um, functioning and stuck at a lower stage of evolution phase. Now, that actually cripples their ability to actually successfully act as a functioning adult due to the fact that they are dangerous. They lack the moral judgment skills. He said that unfortunately, that passes on in their genes to their children. Now, he said that families with that DNA genetic makeup show this. Now, they have large numbers, he stated, of alcoholics, hookers, uh, and general criminals. He once stated at the New Jersey State Conference of Charities and Corrections that feeble-mindedness genes being passed on unchecked accounts for two-thirds of all of social problems in the world, and especially in America, he said. Ooh, that's a big statement, ain't it? Well, they sure didn't make them back then. Now, he stated that it is the, due to their defective ancestry. He stated to get rid of the feeble-mindedness, their DNA genes, and the people calling them or carrying on in their genes. Now, you would successfully get rid of the world's problems if you did this. He said that um, society needed reproduction, needed to be uh, controlled in society and regulated to solve the world's problems. Now, most Americans actually believed in the science of eugenics back in the early 1900s. Theodore Roosevelt uh, told Henry Gofford that society has no business per, to, to permit degenerates from actually pre reproducing their own king. Henry Laughlin actually desired a broader application uh, to eugenics. His idea would eliminate germplasm once and for all. Um, see, Henry's idea was really more political than scientific. Um, he would... Could, hold on. Ah, his vision of what could be done with successful eugenics. He stated for eugenics to be successful, 15 million Americans would have to go under the knife or to be sterilized. He stated that studies show that on average, there are 15 million Americans that are defective. Uh, people need to basically understand during that this time period of history, eugenics was actually believed to be a massively good thing. That by imp um, implementing the official science of heredity, you could possibly save America and even possibly the world after that. The scientists truly did and deeply believed that they were starting the intellectual revolution of re almost religious significance. Their method was to start with a small number of intellectual coverts, then uh, basically spread them out. Eugenics and science was a very um, exciting, energetic, and full of uh, basically endless possibilities at the time. That if you done correctly, it could potentially create a brighter new intellectual wor uh, world, they said. Now, some of the biggest eugenics events were actually, um, was actually, one of the biggest events, sorry, was actually the Betterment exhibit. 
And the founder of that, believe it or not, was Dr. John Harvey Kellogg. Why should that sound so familiar to you? Dr. Harvey Kellogg. Well, it just so happens to be the founder of Kellogg's Cereal, right? Now, he invented that whole thing. Now, he was a very patient or very passionate about what he called biological living. And he was known to be a very healthy man himself. Um, and he was a health reformer as well as a physician. As, you know, an entrepreneur. He wanted to invent different... Med uh, he also invented different medical instruments and he developed certain exercises himself. Um, regiments. As even developed his own dietary plan on top of that. Now, he was actually extremely assessed with being clean as well as being assessed with being pure and assessed with purity as a whole. He believed that he was the key to society and how to cl cleanse society's bowels. Now, on a regular basis, this actually led him to create cornflakes, right? To help cleanse their bowels. All right. For Dr. Kellogg, eugenics just made perfect sense. The science was all about health. His own views about heredity were difficult to change. He believed that his ideas was all about humans could uh, improve themselves. Dr. Kellogg believed environmental uh, could actually ex um, ex affect your genes, your environment could. Now, he stated that tobacco, alcohol, as well as meat consumption will lead to family genetic inferiority of their children. Meaning if you participated in um, to smoking tobacco, drinking alcohol, or eating meat, you're going to be responsible for your family being inferior than the rest. According to Dr. Kellogg, founder of Kellogg Cereal. Anyways, <clears throat> so the aspect of eugenics that made it keep coming basically back, right? Like a broken record. Um, is There's something for everyone in it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, take social hygienics and they're interested in wiping out prostitution as well. It turns out, you know, eugenics, well, they have something interested in that as well. Now, if you were an abolishment, and you wanted to get rid of alcohol because you believed it was destroying families. There's something, there's some kind of eugenic scientist that will agree with you as well. So how does, so what makes it work is that basically it can be used in multiple different areas in multiple different ways, in multiple different ideas. Um, that's what makes it work. It makes people come together around a eugenics, basically scientific idea. Now, you start basically, um, you basically, hold on. Ah, if you start to mix that with the political agendas to uh, recuperate society, well, then you become frightening. Just think about the Nazis and how they were. That's the reason why I said then you'll become frightening. Once you add in poli your political belief systems to it, um... All bets are basically off, you know what I'm saying? So it turns out that the last world war presented a huge need uh, for testing and an opportunity, as you guessed it, for scientists. It was the first time that they gave the intelligence test officially. There was one called an alpha test. And then there was one called a beta test for people who could not read. This gave the government a method to categorize people by intelligence, strength, height, and health. So in 1920s, there was roughly 15,000 more immigrants to Ellis Island each month. Wow, that's a lot. Now, at that time, Charles Davenport wrote a letter and he um, asked, can we build up a wall high enough to keep out the cheaper races? That's what Davenport said. One of the best and leading, brightest scientists of the time. 
Okay. Now, I'm trying to think how much of this I can get done in 10 minutes more. Yeah. All right, I'm going to cut this one short for part one. And here in a minute, we're going to do part two. So stay tuned for part two. We're going to go into my um, to some more notes on eugenics and the history of eugenics. Um, I hope you guys have been following along. I know it was a lot to take on, a lot of information. Um, I'm definitely not the best at pronouncing some of the words, as a lot of my longtime um, listeners and readers know. All right, that's the reason why I, 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 um, I originally called it Working Class Thoughts, um, you know, as a way of me presenting complicated subjects or even taboo subjects in a way that everybody can understand it. Do you get what I'm saying? Like all of us blue collar worker kind of people, like the real blue collar worker peoples. And that's why I created this whole show and podcast as a whole. So everybody bear with me. We're going to get to part two of eugenics and find out exactly what these twisted scientists were actually really doing and what they're really about because we've already established a timeline of how they already been working together since like the early 1800s, 1900s, all the way up into the First World War and Second World War. Adolf Hitler was fond of the founder of Ford Motor Company. And they wrote about each other and had the autographs and whatnot because they were both eugenics and loved each other's eugenics ideas. We're going to get into all of this ongoing in part two. Um, and we've already got into a lot of that. And I just wanted to keep throwing it out there. And that's why I said it's frightening to think about what you could do politically with eugenics. I mean, think about where we're at right now in this year that we're at right now. That's why I keep bringing it up because abortion, as we're going to learn here in a minute, is closely tied in um to eugenics as a whole and i want you guys to understand that as well so be back in just a minute my random thoughts I sing the blues in battle cartoons. I sing the blues in battle cartoons. I sing the blues in battle cartoons. They live a beat in the world to doom. Why wait? Go ahead and tempt fate. Risk it while you can. Go ahead and take a chance to stand next to any man who's ready and willing to die for his land. Just a kid, and yeah, they took kids. Life through the sights of a Dow did his job as a sniper. A kill like a viper. It's been venom when he killed them with fire. They get higher, reach for the sky and spread your wings. We were born to fly, we were born to love. And they taught us to hate and brought us up to believe. But they keep us safe. They curse our names and tell us jet planes can change our world, cause to them it's a game. The life plan, it's a truth dumb land. Down on the ground with the I'm slain from the shade that watch him as it laid into the dark night, deep in the grave. And it ain't that way, you're the man that got them. You know what's bound, they got Batman and Robin tapping the phones. That's how it's shown. It's like every other movie is the same undertone. Same plane blown, same threat grown. I feel like Samuel Jackson, that black snake moan. I sing the blues in battle cry tunes and live up beat in the world of doom. In the scope on Zoom, I flooded the back room to find. Battle cartoons, I sing the blues in battle cartoons. I sing the blues in battle cartoons and live up beat in the world to do. Let's ride and take a look inside the mind's eye that hides the lies. It keeps the secrets low in the grove so no one can see behind their evil shadows. They speak of codes on country back roads and work together with Cobra Commandos. Yo, Joe, I hope you make it back alive and intact. Be safe in Iraq and bring peace to the streets like a priest with a peace. Believe me, you can taste defeat like a gnome with a rifle, armed with the Bible. You got any of the books, still throw them in the fire. And then the burn till the cold turns white and the smoke clears after a hell of a night. What a hell of a fight and a hell of a way to save the very own people that you enslaved. They shoot. Well, I'm recruiting troops for the truth who don't plan on losing. It's a trick and a grand illusion. They create the problem to get their solution. 
It's a shame how they love the rage and love to play a song like we're on stage. You know they love it how they play the public. See, we're in charge. They're the master of puppets. So keep fighting and ride the lightning. Cause when a snake strikes, it's a fighting time. And my flag's flying day and night. It says, don't tread on me in black and white. Yeah, I see the blues in battle cartoons. I see the blues in battle cartoons. I see the blues.